Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about MOSFET amplifiers. This is our example number 6. In this example we'll look at a special circuit which is called the cascode circuit. The cascode is a circuit where we have two or more transistors on top of each other instead of in series. That is a cascade variation. So this is a very handy circuit for high frequency response in comparison to the, let's say, the single stage amplifiers. Of course we will work out everything in the calculation step by step and also verify it's in SPI simulations. So let's look at our example circuit. We have the following circuit with these parameters, the, uh, the components and the parameters shown here, the values. We have two DC voltage sources, VDD and VSS. We have RI and also these six resistors. The load is also given here as 8 kilo ohms. We have two MOSFETs, M1 and M2. Both of them are the enhancement type and channel MOSFET. And they're exact same in the parameters. So they have a threshold voltage of 1 volt. And we have also the conduction parameter KN of 3 milliamps per volt squared. The question here is the calculation of the voltage gain VO over VI. Now remember this VI here is through these two elements. It's connected to the gate of M1 for the measure at the drain of the M2 AC coupled. So that is the condition in this case. For the single stage you will measure then at the drain of this M1 directly without all these components on top of it, this circuit. So let's see how we can tackle this. The solutions, we start with the AC analysis, always the DC, and then we move on to the AC analysis. First let's assume again that the stress region of operation for the MOSFET is valid. That means these two conditions are valid. We assume that this is indeed valid, but we'll check afterward. So that is the condition. And now the DC circuit. First we start with the DC circuit by disabling, but we're making the capacitors open. So this capacitor is open, this capacitor is open, this capacitor is open, this capacitor is open. So C2 open means actually you lose the RL. C1 open means you lose the RI and the input voltage. This is just open and this also open. So you only get the middle part of the circuit, which is shown here. You also see the DC quantities, the currents. And I also designated two nodes for future calculations, G1 and G2. That is the gate voltage here and the gate voltage there. So let's start first with the gate voltage one, which is this one. How do we calculate that? Now, since the current here in the gates of the M1 and M2 are zero, we can just use the voltage divider rule here uh, straightforward without using a Tefan and equivalent circuit. That's then R3 divided by the complete set here, R1, R2 and R3 summation, times the difference between these two voltage nodes, which is VDD minus VSS, and plus the VSS because that's the level shifted version here. And now you get this expression by substituting values given here in this example, and you will now have exactly minus 9 volts. Now let's also use the Kirchhoff's voltage law at the lower input loop, that is this part. Now we can again say VG1 is equal to VGS1, which is this voltage, plus the voltage across RS and the plus the voltage at this node, which is VSS. That's shown here. We know some values here, so we can move on to calculate further, but that's also interesting to do the drain current. This expression for drain current, which is a square law of expression for the MOSFET, is only valid in the saturation region of operation. That's also why we have this assumption. This can be now substituted in this expression by knowing that the ID1 is equal to the IS1. That's also for the ID2, which is also equal to IS2. Why? Because the gate currents are all zero. So taking that together, and then we have this expression here. And you see in this case, when you substitute the values, the only unknown will be the VGS1. So you see that the resistor is known, the Conduction parameter is known, the threshold voltage is known, and also the DC power supply. Everything is known, only the VGS ones. Now we cannot solve this. Before we solve it, let's simplify this together because this is 12, and we can also replace this minus 15 to the left side, and you will have this simple expression. Now this can be also solved by hand, but you can also use your solver if you want, and then you get two solutions. One of them is minus 0.3115 volts, the other one is 1.3115. 605 volts. Now which one is now correct? Which one do we take for our future calculations? This one is smaller than the V threshold, 
which is larger than uh, smaller than one volt so that is invalid because otherwise i cannot use my saturation region of operation condition and this is larger than the threshold voltage of one volt so this is the valid one so that means the solution for this analysis that the vgs1 is 1.605 volts then we get the following that the drain current can be now calculated using this vgs1 we just determined and that will be then 1.185 milliamps almost 1.1 milliamps let's also check the vds condition that for that we need to make a kirchhoff's voltage flow for the upper input loop for here so from vgs vg2 from vg2 we say vg2 is equal to the vgs2 plus this vds1 plus the voltage here plus the uh, voltage at node vss now we can now also determine VGS2 in a similar form as we did for the VGS1, just the voltage division here, so R2 plus R3 divided by the summation, and then times the voltage difference between the two nodes and plus the VSS. And when you do that, you get exactly 7 volts by substituting values as we did here. Now this is 7 volts, this is unknown, VGS2, and VDS1 is also unknown, so let's move on. This is the VDS one. This is the known. This is unknown. This is known. And this is also known. But this will be 16 volts. You might ask why? Because VGS2 is exact same as the VGS1. Because the following reason. This current here, ID1, is already calculated. And that was the result of this gate to source current for the M1. But this is also the same as the IS2, which is also the same as ID2. And since ID2, or IS2, is related to the VGS2, and we have all the parameters exact same as for the other uh, MOSFET parameters, we can say that this VG2 is also exact same as the 1.605 volts. So that's the reason for having this uh, VGS1 is equal to VGS2. We will see that later in the simulation results. Now, this is definitely larger than the condition what we need here, which is the VGS1 minus the threshold voltage, and that is 1.605 minus 1 is this voltage 0 0.605, which is definitely smaller than that one, so the condition is here also correct. So we can say that the saturation region of operation is this is valid, so it means this is also correct. So our assumption was indeed correct. Now let's move on and then collect the values here for the ID. 1 VGS1 and VDS1 and move on to the second uh, analysis ID1 as said before is IS2 and that means also the ID2 this current is also equal to IS2 already said but that's also then equal to ID1 that means all the currents here in DC are exactly the same so the drain current now for the ID2 for the MOSFET M2 will be also exactly the same because the VGS2 is all the same we just determined that so we can say this current is also the same now, using now the Kirchhoff's voltage low at the output loop, that is this loop, VDD is equal to this voltage, plus that voltage, VDS2, plus the voltage across the, this two, these two nodes, VDS1, and also voltage across the RS, and this voltage, VSS. That's all shown here. I already collected the RD and RS together because the current through them are exact same, which is ID2 or IS1, doesn't matter. So this is the collection, and you see the VDS2 and VDS1 here. What we want is the calculation of the VDS2. So that is the result first, because we want to check that the saturation region of operation is still valid. This is VDD. We know that it's 15. This is minus minus 15, and then minus the 4000 plus 5000 here, and then the times the current, which is exact same as before for the ID1, which is 1.0898 milliamps, and then minus the what we have just calculated, which is 16. And when you do that, the results are shown here, you get now 4.118 volts. And this is definitely larger than the VGS2, which is now 1.605 volts, minus the threshold, and that will give you again the same result for the difference here. So that is again valid, and we can say that our assumption of the saturation region is correct. Now, Let's summarize the DC result. This is for the MOSFET one. You can see the ID, VGS, and the VDS in similar form for the other one. You see that the, the uh, drain current and the gate to source voltage are exact same, only the difference is the VDS voltage.
Okay. Now let's also check the simulation results of the DC analysis. This is the circuit in the given here in the example. This is a drone in the SPI simulator. You see the in blue the DC values. You see here the gate to source voltage for the M2 and M1 are the exact same also what we have calculated. You see the drain to source voltage for the second MOSFET M2 which is 4.112. We have 4.118 so a little bit small error there but not that much. We see the VDS1 is 16 exactly, which is also what we have. The drain current here, ID1 here in this case, is a little bit larger than what we have, just a little bit larger. So this is 1.099 milliamps, we have 1.098 milliamps. So that is really nice to see that this is all uh, very close to what we have calculated. So we can say this is fine. Let's move on and then do the AC analysis now. Now, let's also look at the AC analysis of the circuit in order to calculate the required voltage gain. We have here now the model, you see in the red box the N1 model, the small signal model for the MOSFET M1 and for the MOSFET M2 it is given in blue dash box. You see the controlled current source here from the VGS1 and for the same for the, v, uh, for the M2 you see the VGS2. You see the gate, the source and the drain for the first MOSFET and then also for the second MOSFET in the same manner. We know for the AC analysis the capacitor will be perfectly short, this is now grounded, AC ground, but also the DC sources will be grounded, so that means this is a ground. This note also, that means the R1 is now shorted. That's also the reason why we have a G to a ground here, because that's the AC coupling through the capacitor C3. We also have the RD going to ground from the drain of uh, the MOSFET 2 and also the RL is now going directly to the drain because the C2 is shorted in AC so the RL and RD are in effect parallel that's the reason why we have it here we also have the R2 and R3 in parallel why because from the gate 1 node it goes to ground and the R3 goes from the ga uh, gate 1 node also the ground because the ESS is ground so these are also R2 and R3 are also parallel. R1 is directly connected to the gate 1, also the voltage source is connected here and the rest is actually shown here. Also the RS is shorted out because this is ground so this will be then also grounded and this is grounded so everything is now here shorted also. So this is now the complete diagram. Now what you see is the following. The voltage gain, what we need is this one and we can now split the problem in this case by saying it is the VGS1 over the VI times the VO we want here over the VGS1 all the way here. And that will then again result in VO over VI. It doesn't matter. So mathematically you can see that this is indeed correct. But this will be a little bit uh, easier to calculate than this direct expression. So the first one is let's develop the equation for VO. What is VO? VO is here, this voltage, it is the voltage across the parallel combination of this one, which is actually the current here flowing uh, through this resistor, which is in the negative direction, that's why we have a minus sign here, which is GM2 times the VGS2 times the parallel combination of RD and RL. But we know the ID2 here will be exact same as ID1, there cannot be a branch here, so that means the GM1 times VGS1, which is this current, will be exact same as GM2 times the VGS2. So we can also say, if we now take this together, we can also write down the VO instead of the GM2 times the VGS2, also with the GM1 times the VGS1. That's also possible. Then we also know that we have a ratio here, which is VO over VGS1, which is here, that can be also written in this format, which is a minus GM1 times the parallel combination of the RD and RL. That's actually this uh, second part in this expression given in red. Okay, the blue part is actually a voltage divider because this part going from the G1 to the right side is completely disconnected from this part of the circuit. So we have actually voltage division and R2 and R3 are parallel divided by the RI plus this parallel combination that is just your attenuation actually here. Now this product will now give you the gain. So in total you can say R3 parallel to R2 divided by the RI plus the same parallel combination times the minus GM1 
times the RD and RL again parallel. Now we need to use this equation also check that in the eight the simulations. So going uh, further and now calculating the required uh, parameters because the GM1 isn't still an unknown here that can be used and calculated by the DC values we have for a drain current and we have this and we know that the GM1 or GM in, in general is given by this expression we have the ID current the DC current and also the KN as a parameter so we substitute the values in here and also the given from the 3 milliamps per square volts we have 3.63 millisiemens. This is the same for the ID2, by the way, and also for the GM2, so that's the exact same result. We also know that R2 in the parallel with R3 will give you this 54.55 approximately kilo ohms, and the parallel combination of RD and RL will give you 3077 ohms. Now, together, we can now work out the voltage gain now, because we have now everything. The voltage gain is now given by this, so this is the parallel combination of the R2 and R3 divided by this, times the GM in a minus sign format, and also the product of uh, the, the value of the RD parallel with RL. Now when you do now the calculation, you get minus 11.1, very close to that value. Okay, let's see that this is indeed correct. This is the simulation result from the spice, this is trans transient response, this is the blue line, which is our input, and the pink line is our output, which is inverted, you can see that why it's also minus, and the input is a 1 millivolt peak, it has a 10 kilohertz frequency, and its peak peak value will be then 2 millivolts. Now, what is then the output? The output has, peak peak output voltage is, the maximum value is 11.13, and the minimum value is minus 11.04 millivolts. So the difference here is 22.16 20 millivolts. Now for the voltage gain, we need the V uh, out over V in. You can also say the peak peak output voltage divided by the peak peak input voltage with a minus sign in front. We know what we have here, which is 22.16 millivolts. And for the input, it was 2 millivolts. So this will result in minus 11.08 as the gain. But we have calculated minus 11.1. So it is very close to what we have calculated. So you can say this is a very, really nice result. So we have verified that our analysis was correct. And the gain was indeed very close to minus 11.1 for this situation. All right. This is our example number six about the, the transistor amplifiers in this case. Using a cascode variation using two transistors to MOSFET and channel enhancement type. We have worked out the DC analysis first and then the AC analysis and checked our result using simulations. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.